This facility removes more than 600,000 pounds of sludge from sewage and wastewater every day. It's dumped into drying beds after a lengthy process here at the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant. Once dry, it'll be used as fertilizer in surrounding farms and fields. Stickney is located on the outskirts of Chicago and at 413 acres, it's one of the largest wastewater treatment plants in the world. It processes all of the sewage from roughly 2.3 million nearby residents. And everything that arrives here will eventually be transformed into clean water, fertilizer, and energy to power the plant. When it rains, the facility can handle a whopping 1.4 billion gallons of wastewater in a single day. That's over 2,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of wastewater. So when we're rocking and rolling, it's 1 million gallons getting treated each and every minute. Here, everything that flows down a drain has raw potential when it arrives. Well, after it goes through the first stop, the course screens. You could have uh, snapping turtle, water bottles. One time years ago, we had hundreds of feet of rope that just got trapped here, and it was this one large rope monster that we called it that had to be removed. So how does a facility like this tap into the potential of sewage? And what happens to everything that disappears down Chicago's drains? You flush the toilet or you take a shower, you never think of what happens to that water after it's gone down your drain. It's just out of sight, out of mind. That's Joe Cummings the operations manager at Stickney. And he's been working here for over 15 years. I'm often asked what it's like working in a wastewater treatment plant. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You've walked past a manhole, a sewer, an outhouse. You know what those smells are. You are gonna smell those things because after all, it is raw sewage coming in. Once all that sewage arrives at the plant, there are two main processes at play treating the wastewater so it's safe to be released back into rivers and transforming the solids into biosolids to be used as fertilizer. We're separating out the solid material that will settle to the bottom, a sludge, and the liquid that goes off back into the river system. The solids have been treated further to produce what we call biosolids cake, which is an earthy material. It's very good for being used as a fertilizer. What's happening at this plant recreates what happens organically in nature, condensing what would normally take several weeks into just a few hours. The process begins by sending sewage through a set of coarse screens. These screens have gaps to filter out larger objects, like garbage and plastics, and one item in particular that Joe and his team see often. This is as good a time as any to discuss flushable wipes. Just because you can flush them doesn't mean that you should. Those wipes do not break down in the sewer system. They don't break down inside the plant. So what happens is they come here, they find any jagged surface, and they just what we call rag up. They form into large blocks, and then ultimately we have to get those removed. So uh, my advice, my request to everybody, don't flush flushable wipes. Once trapped, a rake scrapes up all the debris and transfers it to a conveyor belt. From here, it moves to a dumpster that will ultimately be transported to a landfill. Contrary to what most people might assume, Joe and the team here don't mind what the job entails. What everybody wants to know is, what does it smell like? As you can imagine, it smells like sewage. Right now, we're at the first spot inside the plant where the sewage is actually exposed to air, and honestly, it doesn't smell so bad. Once the wastewater passes through the core screens, it's pumped above ground to the aerated grit tanks. At this stage of treatment, the flow of water slows down. The lighter materials, like fats, oils, and grease, known as scum, float to the top of these preliminary tanks, where the heavier solid waste, or sludge, settles to the bottom. Next, a series of rotating slats skims off the scum floating on the surface and scrapes up the sludge from the bottom of the tanks. That sludge goes on to our digesters, to our centrifuges, ultimately become our nutrient-rich fertilizer that we call biosolids. 
We'll come back to this sludge later. Meanwhile, the remaining wastewater passes through a primary settling phase before moving on to the secondary treatment tanks. Here, air is pumped into a tank of carefully maintained microorganisms that consume pollutants and other harmful substances in the water. This oxygen gives the bacteria what they need to perform an important job. Oxygen neutralizes the compounds such as ammonia, turns it into less toxic forms of nitrogen. Ammonia is toxic to the small fish and the larger fish that live in our waterways. So by turning it into nitrate and nitrite, it's a less toxic form that the wildlife can tolerate much better. These circular tanks, known as the final settling tanks, are the last stop in the process for treating wastewater at Stickney. Here, solids and liquids further separate, the remaining solids are removed, and the treated wastewater is returned to the river. All of the liquid that you see traveling over that weir, that's going out to the sanitary and ship canal as treated effluent. This treated wastewater needs to meet specific quality standards set by the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency to ensure it does not harm the environment or pose a risk to the public. Samples are analyzed every day in its lab to ensure that treated wastewater is safe to be released. What we have here are some of the samples that we collect inside the plant. Just starting from the beginning, this is what raw sewage looks like. You know, it's a, it's a mixture of 99.9% .9 clean water and then all the solids that are in there. What we have here is mixed liquor. This is what is captured and treated in the aeration tanks and then settles out in the final tanks, the secondary treatment. So as you can see here, I shook this up a few minutes ago and you're already getting some of the separation of the solids separating out. The liquid that comes off the top of it, that's what goes back into the waterways and the solids are sent for further treatment. And then that water, after it comes out of there, is this, looks very nice and clean. It's not drinkable. The important thing is we do not produce drinking water here, but it goes back out into the waterways much cleaner than it came. When the flushable wipes go into the system, they never break down. These have been in here for roughly four years. While the wastewater is being treated and released, the sludge is moving on to a different area to be treated through centrifugation and digestion. Inside these centrifuges, the sludge is mixed with a polymer and spun at high speeds. This helps further separate the solids from the liquids. The digesters break down the organic matter in the sludge through a process called anaerobic digestion. Here, solids are heated and broken down by microorganisms to produce a biogas product. Think of it as your stomach, just digesting, breaking down the solids, and as part of that process, it actually produces methane gas that is reused in the plant for part of our energy uses. After this, it enters a set of centrifuges again, resulting in a biosolids cake. On an average day, this facility will produce over 1,000 wet tons of biosolids cake. These are loaded into rail cars to be handled at a separate facility. This is where all of the biosolids that have been produced from our centrifuges that you saw upstairs that go onto the conveyor belt system all go into our hoppers and then are deposited into our rail cars. We fill up roughly one rail car with 70 wet tons of biosolids in one shift. Over the course of a normal day, we might fill up enough rail cars for 1,000 to 2,000 wet tons of biosolids. The rail cars transport this material a few miles away on a private railroad, and the biosolids are dumped into a lagoon for additional treatment and drying. The final product is fertilizer that can be used on farm fields golf courses, parks, and recreational facilities. One thing that's special about the Stickney plant is because of the size of it, we do a lot of things in-house. We have an entire laboratory right here that we do the monitoring and the research. One of the research things that we have that might surprise people is we have a greenhouse. We will take our biosolids, that nutrient-rich fertilizer product, and we'll mix it with soils, blend it in different proportions, 
tested on many different species, and that's all to determine what is the optimum use for that biosolid. When used as fertilizers, biosolids can have several positive impacts. They've been shown to improve soil health, reduce nutrient loss, and increase the amount of water soil can retain. The main thing that the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant and all of our plants are doing is to protect the water environment. Toilets are not trash cans. Just because something can be flushed down the toilet does not mean that it should be. So what you should really concentrate on is your bodily waste, your toilet paper, that's what should go down the toilet. Street drains, you should keep those clear because anything when the rain falls, it's going to sweep everything into the street drain and it's all going to come here. In general, Stickney is considered the biggest or one of the biggest plants in the world. Uh, in the state of Illinois, the average plant is probably treating about 1 million gallons a day and we're treating 1,440 times that during the high flow.